Hello everybody, this is Mr. Shaban. Today we're going to talk about another unit in the chemistry. Uh, our unit is called the nature of matter. We're going to study the states of matter. We're going to go through the solids, the liquids, along with the gases. So the first thing we're going to take today is the comparison between solid, liquids, and gases. As you can see, we're going to have different aspects of to compare between the solids and liquids and gases. Uh, we're going to compare between them as per the distance, arrangement, movement, shape, volume, and intermolecular force. Let's start first with the solid. When it comes to the distance between the particles, the particles are very close to each other and we have no spaces between them. For the liquid, the distance is close, but still we have small spaces between the particles. While the gas, the particles are far apart from each other. So that's the distance. The arrangement, as you can see over here, the particles are well arranged in a fixed position. The particles are uh, uh, maintaining a certain shape. Over here, particles flow on top of each other. Okay, uh, that's due to the spaces between them. And as you can see, it takes whatever the shape of the container. And over here, the gases it's also flow randomly, move uh, randomly. So this gives them uh, an unstable arrangement where the particles are going to fill the space where they are going to be placed in, to take the shape of the container. When it comes to the movement, movement over here, the for the solids, the particles are not moving, but they vibrate. So vibration takes place uh, at a certain position, at a fixed position. Over here, uh, liquid, the particles roll and slide over each other. Uh, and over here, uh, the movement for the gas, it takes place randomly because there is no uh, force between the particles. So the movement, par uh, the movement part for the liquid and the gas is what make them flow. That's why you can pour the water from one container into another container because the particles can slide over each other and that's why the gas can move from one room into another if we talk about perfume okay let's talk about the shape for the solids solids they have fixed shape the shape is fixed the fixed shape is uh, going to be maintained in whatever the container that's going to accommodate the solids while the liquid has uh, no fixed shape, it takes the shape of the container and the gas has no fixed shape, it takes the shape of the container. So over here we have fixed shape and over here we have uh, take the shape of the container, gas take the shape of the container. For the volume, volume, uh, the solid is going to occupy a certain space because it has fixed shape so the volume is going to be fixed as well because it takes a certain space and it does not change and the liquid also liquid takes a fixed volume takes a certain uh, space and does not change you can imagine that you have a water bottle 330 ml so by taking this water into another container the water is going to occupy also 330 ml space so uh, for the solid and for the liquid fixed volume this means that we cannot compress them we cannot push them to take a smaller space while the while the gas it has no fixed volume because we can uh, press uh, the particles of the gas we, we can press them, to press them uh, together to take smaller space. So no fixed volume, it's spread out to fill its container. Okay, so we can compress, compressibility for the gas is very high because we can still manage to put the particles together because of the large space between the particles. Then the last point is intermolecular force. The intermolecular force for the solid is very, very, very strong. That's because the particles are uh, acting as one unit. They are very strong. The force is very strong. So they hold the particles together in one space. On the other hand, liquids, the force is strong, but not enough to keep the particles without moving. So it's strong, yes, but it's still weaker than the solid. 
while in the other uh, hand the gases it has a very very weak force between the particles so they can't maintain the same uh, position they can't stay together they always move because they have no force to hold them together so this was the comparison between the solid liquid and gases we have made the comparison in terms of the distance we have made the comparison in terms of the arrangement we have made the comparison in terms of the movement shape volume along with intermolecular force right now we're going to talk about the conversion between the three states of matter as you can see over here we have solids we have liquid we have gas and solid liquid and gas we we're going to have uh, certain arrangement so i want you to look over here i want you to look over here because this is going to be very important when we change the solid into liquid we tend to heat up right so when we change liquid to gas we tend to, we tend to heat up as well so we can say when we move from solid to liquid to gas we are heating up we are giving energy when we change back from gas to liquid from liquid to solid then we are cooling down cooling down means that we are taking the energy out of the gas to give uh, uh, less energy to change into liquid then we take energy out of the liquid so it can change into solid good fantastic so changing solid to liquid this process is called melting the solid melt to change into liquid so at a fixed temperature at a fixed temperature the solid will be changing into liquid this temperature is is going to be called melting point so we can say that the ice melts at a certain temperature this temperature is called melting point so ice change into water at a certain temperature which is the melting point if we talk about ice and water then we'll talk about the melting point which is zero degrees celsius perfect from liquid to gas when we change from liquid to gas we can say we have two different processes the first one is called evaporation the second one is called boiling evaporation takes place only at the surface of the water and evaporation takes place at any temperature between the melting point and boiling point okay any temperature between the melting point and boiling point you can have evaporation while boiling takes place all over the water okay in the container <clears throat> not only the surface like evaporation and boiling takes place at a certain temperature at a fixed temperature this temperature is going to be called boiling point if we talk about the water then we're talking about 100 degrees celsius yes that's the boiling point of the water 100 degrees celsius so changing liquid to gas this takes place at a certain temperature is called boiling point or it takes place between the melting point and boiling point and this is going to be called evaporation on the other hand when we want to change the gas back into liquid we tend to do two things the first one is uh, taking the energy out and this takes place or happens when you cool it down okay so we cool the gas down to change back into liquid and this process is called condensation and condensation takes place at the same temperature of boiling point so we can say that boiling point is a temperature where the liquid change into gas if we're heating or the gas or at same temperature this temperature if you're cooling down the gas will be changing back into liquid and then from changing from liquid to solid this takes place uh, at a certain temperature as well and this process called freezing it takes place almost at the melting point so we can state that melting point if we're heating that's the temperature where the solid will be changing into liquid the same temperature if you're cooling is going to uh, lead to freezing to change the liquid to the solid it takes place at that particular temperature and same over here boiling and condensation both takes place at the same temperature if you're heating then you're changing into gas if you're cooling then you're changing back into liquid 
So in today's lesson we have discussed the following. We have discussed the comparison between the solid liquids and gases. We said uh, they are different in terms of the distance, in terms of the arrangement, in terms of the movement, in terms of the shape, volume and intermolecular force where the solid takes a uh, very small distance between the particles fixed arrangement and uh, they are not moving but they're vibrating fixed shape fixed volume and a uh, very strong intermolecular force liquids they are close together but they have small spaces between them the particles are slight over each other they take the shape of the container they have fixed volume the force between the particles is strong and we said that solid and liquid both cannot be compressed because the space between the particles is not enough uh, to compress the particles and at the end we, we have spoken about the gas we said the particles are far apart from each other they have fixed arrangement uh, sorry they don't have fixed arrangement they move randomly they have no shape no fixed shape they have no fixed volume and the force between the particles is very weak then we have spoken about the conversion between the three states of matter. We said we can convert the solid back uh, go to, going to liquid uh, in a process called melting at a melting point. And we said uh, liquid change into gas at a process called boiling. And this takes place exactly at a boiling point, which is fixed temperature. And we can change the gas back to liquid at a process called condensation. And we can change the liquid back to solid at a process called freezing. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and see you next time.